Hi. Alright. Uh, we're, we're gonna make some, some turkey. Okay. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna just make any old turkey. We're gonna make it uh, a little, little spicier, you know, a little, little more interesting for you. We're gonna make a whole meat, some turkey. It's gonna be great. So, cleaning. Is some high quality boneless turkey breast cutlets. I'm going to put that in the microwave to defrost. Use the instructions. Here it is for to on your microwave to match what you need to defrost. This is a pound turkey, so let's put it in there. Frost, let's see, head, meats, this is poultry. I'm gonna go for, it is 1.1 pounds. I'm gonna do the power. Don't wanna do it too high. I like doing it on normal, especially because this is a surprisingly strong microwave. All right, it's got 10 minutes. Well, your chicken's defrosting. Chicken, well, your turkey's defrosting. There we go. Let's assemble our ingredients that we need to prep the turkey to go into the oven. Right, we're going to use some shake and bake here. This is the panko. Actually, I like this one because it doesn't have any other seasonings in it and it allows me to customize to my own flavor choices. And today, we're going for the spicy. I'm going to be adding some crushed red pepper to the shake and bake. Now, since this is going into the oven, we need to add another ingredient. Now, I'm not a fan of using this ingredient because I've made it by hand before. And it's once you've made it by hand, you never want to have it again, and that is mayonnaise. I don't like mayonnaise in general, but I get for this brand, Kraft, it tastes all right to me. And to add to the mayonnaise, so it's not so sad, is chili sauce. And this will form the protective coating that keeps the moisture inside the turkey when it's in the oven. Let's get all that ready. Put it all in there. Then I like to use the uh, big set for big flavor. Put some of that stuff. This is the annoying part because it doesn't want to stand up on its own. At this point you realize it's not going to work, so you grab it, go and get a spoon. Any spoon will do. Just give it a few heaping. Just give it two heaps. There we go. It's going to bake nicely. That. Now what you want to do, grab it firmly and just shake it. Just shake it and uh, sort of work it into it, like so. Yep, now it's almost completely incorporated. Next part, you get a new spoon of mayonnaise. Get in there. Big. I like to use these uh, Chinese takeout uh, little boxes here because they form just the right shape you need to get it uh, all nice and spread out. Just, just the right size. So just get some of that mayonnaise in there. You're gonna need a lot of mayonnaise. Sorry, this much mayonnaise is gross to you. That's what we gotta do. Next, the chili sauce. Just a nice blob there. We're gonna mix it. Get that right there for you. Oh, yeah. See? Isn't that just appetizing?
stir until the mayonnaise and chili sauce have fully integrated. You get this nice, lovely, light pinkish color. Grab nicely. Tray like so. Take two used spoons, put them in the wash. Our turkey is a few minutes from being frosted, so let's get our oven going. I'm not sure if your family is like ours, but we like to store our extra pots and pans in the oven. Just no, just in case. Trust me, the last thing you want to do is forget you've got some plastic in the oven and have it going, and you've created a toxic waste site. Following the directions on the box, you simply, on the following directions on the box, you set your oven to 400 degrees. Nice. All right, so your oven is preheating, your turkey is defrosting, you've got all of your prep work laid out. This now comes for the waiting game. Now what I like to do to pass the time uh, when cooking and waiting around is to read a good book. And for uh, right now I'm working my way through the complete Sherlock Holmes. Uh, now I'm pretty sure you all know who Sherlock Holmes is. And I'm just, this is a nice anthology with some extra notes and uh, a little added information. It's really, this is a great way to read these stories. And honestly, I'm excited to do this. Uh, right now I'm on the adventures of the Copper Breaches. So I'll see you a few minutes when everything's done. All right, our turkey is out of the microwave, it is defrosted, and now is when things are going to get messy. If you haven't already, you should definitely go wash your hands right now. Fortunately, I have clean and dry, so we can begin the process. Mayonnaise ready, we have our turkey ready off to the side here. Tear into that package. Excellent. You need to have ready, so once your turkey goes through, the mayonnaise, the shake and bake, and you have a pan at the ready. So I've got mine right here. This is a, honestly, even though this isn't completely necessary uh, step, I like a nice well-worn pan that's gone through the oven many times and has accumulated layers and layers of love from being used for so long. Right. Here, ready now. To properly get your cutlets, take your cutlet, you place it into the mayonnaise, pressing down firmly, flip once, or it splits in your hand, and so you get to get two for the price of one. Flip, 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 sort of massage it in, making sure to create the biggest mess possible. And placing cutlet one into the bag. Same repeat, the same process with your next cutlet. Make sure it is evenly coated, but not too heavily coated. Place it into the bag as well. At this point, your hands are covered in mayonnaise, so what I like to do is to scrape off as much as I can to save our delicious goo, and now we rinse. Now that we've rinsed, take up two cutlets, spin them in the bag, shake. Chin, grab cutlet number one, and number two, place on your pan. Don't worry if you're not evenly coated with the crumb. You can always come back and add a little later. Repeat this process for everything else. Uh, we're just going to time lapse this bit here or just cut it entirely. At this point, realize you've made a massive miscalculation in the amount of 
panko breadcrumbs that you needed, realize that what you thought were two was one, and sometimes you just have to go with it as is. Fortunately, by this time you've realized your horrible mistake and that you can't go back and that you've also made a mess and that you've ruined everything. Your oven is ready, and so we can put it in there for 40 minutes in the middle rack while uh, flipping halfway. There's your little mistakes. And that's really what cooking is. It's a series of happy mistakes. Or sad mistakes. But if it all works out in the end, it's fine. Right. Our meat is in the oven. Now we can begin working on our side. Right. Which will consist of some golden kernel corn. Preferably not sweet, but sweet's what I've got, so that's what I'll work with. Some black bean soup. Uh, I like this because it's already got all the seasoning and everything that I want in there already. But if you just have a regular plain uh, black bean, you need to add a few tablespoons of olive oil and I would say mm, some, uh, a quarter of a green bell pepper and a quarter of an onion. Again, it's, it's really to taste, but that's what I like. So first, <clears throat> To avoid a really, really wet the, uh, side, you're going to drain your corn. Pleasant noises. And so now we can go over to the stove. Let's take our corn, get a fork, dump it into the pan. Do the same thing with our black bean soup. Shaking out all those beans. Don't scrape around too much because otherwise you'll get the uh, metallic taste of the inside of the can in your food and that stuff does not come out. Get a slotted spatula, stir it together. Once it's all stirred, we begin the waiting process again. Since, you know, these vegetables will only take 10 minutes to cook, so back to some reading. To the man who loves art for its own sake, remark Sherlock Holmes, tossing aside the advertisement sheet of the Daily Telegraph, it is frequently in its least important and lowliest manifestation. Excellent. We shall then look thoroughly into the affair. Of course, there is one feasible explanation. It's time to uh, flip our cutlets. So, uh, get some other mitts. Stir in a pair of tongs. And get ready for the flip. I would say are those cutlets look quite done to me. That has been our time, so now let us get our vegetables heated and ready to go. All right, set your stove to a low heat. You want egg pre-stir and just add a critical ingredient. A truly lovely Mexican cheese blend. Sprinkle liberally. Oh. Stir to mix. And uh, pretty much stir occasionally until you get it, until it begins to simmer, and then it's done. Now, back to my book. All right, now that our vegetables are steaming, starting to steam, they are nice and warm and ready to go. And now comes the tricky part, how to properly plate this. Also, I decided to add some cheap, more Mexican cheese and some lemon juice to our turkey cutlets to uh, cut down on the spice a little. 
finally in an off-camera taste test, realize you've made the turkey a little too spicy, so it needs to be served with some creamy Wisconsin Blues cheese sauce. And when you're ready, dig in and enjoy. Sorry that the video's late. The turkey was too spicy. Apologies for the delay. <laughs>